Hey guys, today's tutorial is about creating a physics simulation and animation with Blender 2.92. First, let's have a look at the rendered scene. The render engine is Eevee. You can see the soft body ball colliding with a few objects and for some of them I set the size so that the ball is almost not able to pass through. Here I use an animation to push the ball and then in the end it lands in this container. Okay, so first of all, I'll give you a short breakdown of the scene. And after that, we will create such a ball from scratch. You can see the camera is kind of connected to the ball object so that it can follow the movement. And to have the view through the camera, I open a new window. And in this, I press the zero key on the numpad and we get the camera view. This is what the camera sees and what you can render in the end. I press the play button on the timeline and the simulation is played, we get a live preview. Now the ball lands on this object and when I select it, you see that there is a keyframe animation added to the timeline, a rotation, so that the object is pushed and the simulation continues. All right, but why is the ball colliding? All these objects that I select now have enabled physics for collision. You can see this here in the physics panel. There's an option enabled physics for and collision is checked. For the most objects, I kept the default settings, but for this one, I decreased the friction a bit so that the ball could slide easier. Okay, so let's have a look at the ball. It's red and a bit slimy. And this is due to its material, so let's open the shader editor. With the ball selected, and then you can see it has a simple principal shader. I press the comma key on the numpad to focus the object in this view. And here you can see the surface, which is created by adding a noise texture connected to a bump node, which is then plugged into the normal input of the principal shader. The color is defined by the base color of the principal shader and I also added a subsurface color, which adds a nice variation to the material. Okay, but now let's come to the physics of the ball and I would say let's create it again from scratch. So press Shift and A to add a new object, a new mesh and now you would expect that I add a UV sphere. But actually I add a cube. Not because I love the cube so much, what I do, it has an advantage over the sphere when it comes to bending the geometry. What I have to do for this is to add a subdivision surface modifier here in the modifiers panel. I increase the levels to three. Now it looks like a sphere and then you can already apply the modifier. And when I go to the edit mode now, you can see it has evenly distributed quads, which is perfect when the geometry is bending. I right click and set the shading to smooth and that's it for the mesh. Now we can go ahead and add the physics. Select the physics properties panel and perhaps you assume now that I add a soft body physics, but I don't because in Blender 2.90 you can use the cloth physics to achieve the same results as for the soft body physics, but the performance is way better. So let's have a look at the parameters. You can set the quality in steps per frame, the higher the better, but it also makes it slower. To get the bending effect for the ball, I modified the stiffness. This defines the resistance of the material. This means how much it resists to tension, compression, shear and bending. I just played around with the values till I got the desired effect and I recommend to do the same. I set here the values 2 for tension, 1 for compression and 1.5 for bending. The next two sections, damping and internal springs, I didn't change but I enabled the pressure. I wanted the object to have a pressure that is constantly applied, like a balloon, I set it to 1.2. And to get a kind of slimy effect, you can set the fluid density to a small positive value to simulate a fluid inside of the object. Then I have to set the start and the end frame of the simulation. The end frame you see is 600. And the last parameters that you can set is for the collision. Again, the quality, the higher the better. But of course, more calculation has to be done. Another parameter is the distance that the object has to the colliding objects. I set it to 10 mm, which looked pretty good. Then there's the option impulse clamping. I set this to a value of 0.3 to avoid instability when the object is colliding. And that's it, now you can press the play button to start the simulation. 
and it is fast enough so that you can preview it. In the viewport you don't have to bake it, but of course this depends on the complexity of the simulation and your hardware. Once it is played it is cached internally and you can scrub through the timeline to go to certain positions of the simulation. This blue area here indicates for which frames the simulation is cached. Nice, now to make the ball look more interesting I assign the red material that you saw in the breakdown of the scene. That's simple, but now we come to the camera's movement. I want the camera to follow the ball along the X and the Z axis. So the first thing we think of is to add a constraint. So with the camera selected I go here to the Object Constraints tab and from the Transform section I choose the Copy Location Constraint. This looks perfect, I can select a target, I select the ball object and rename it and then back to the camera and assign it as target. I disable the Y axis, I want this to stay as is and now you see the camera has a blue line to the ball which is the constraint that we added and now I assume that it will follow the ball's movement along the X and the Z axis but when I start the simulation you see it doesn't work. And this is because the ball, the object isn't moved. The location of the object isn't changed by the simulation. What is changed is the mesh, the geometry. But the camera can only follow an object. So my solution was to add a new object, an empty object inside of the ball. Then set the target of the constraint to this object, to the empty, instead of the ball. And then we go ahead and select the empty object then the ball as well by pressing the shift key and left click. Then I tap into edit mode and vertex selection and select the vertex from the mesh, from the ball's mesh. And then I press F3 and search for make vertex parent. This is going to parent the empty object, the selected one, to the selected vertex. And this means when we are following the empty object with the camera now, what we do because of the constraint, we are following the mesh of the ball as well. You see it in the viewport when I start the simulation, the camera is following. Again to have the view through the camera, I open a new window with a 3D viewport and press the zero key on the numpad. And what you see now on the right side, everything inside of the rectangle of the camera would be captured as images or a video, yeah, when we are going to render it. Before we do that, let me show you one more option the offset of the copy location constraint. When this is checked you can move the camera around which defines the offset that is added to the X and Y location constraint. So I can set a rotation angle of the camera and I also try to keep the ball in the center of the camera's view. Ok, looks good, now let's go ahead and render the scene as a video. I go to the output properties where I can define the resolution of the rendering. I set it to a square because I also rendered for Instagram. And I define the start and the end frame here. Then I set the output directory and the file format to FFmpeg. This means we are going to render a video. Which is in my opinion alright for short animations like this one, but if you want to be on the safe side when something is crashing during the render, it is a better option to render images for each frame and then combine these to a movie using the sequencer. I set the container to MPEG-4 and the codec to H264. Ok, and to render the animation you can go to Render, Render Animation or you press Ctrl F12. And that's it. Again, I hope you like it and you found it useful. If you do, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And also follow me on my Instagram where you can see animations like this one. If you have any questions, then add these to the comments. I try to answer as best as I can. And I'll see you soon on JNM.